It's Tuesday, January 17. In the headlines, Prime Minister Andrew Holness confirms Jamaica's transformation to a republic will be pursued with haste in 2023. Regionally, Cayman government and health authorities now addressing suspected case of avian flu. Internationally, fears of new Ukrainian offensive have been sparked by Russia and Belarus beginning joint drills. And in sports, Andy Mori wins epic five-set battle. This is the news on PBC Jamaica. I'm Simone Absalom Gale. The government will be moving with haste and alacrity towards transforming Jamaica into a republic, so says Prime Minister Andrew Holness. Addressing Tourism Minister Edmund Bartlett's 25th anniversary scholarship program at the Half Moon Hotel in St. James on the weekend, Mr. Holness said that while the process is something he inherited, he never expected it to be a straight line. Maya Chung reports. Prime Minister Andrew Holness is confirming that it is time for Jamaica to become a republic. He said that for Jamaica, the process is not simple, and the nation has known this from the journey started. He urged Minister Marlene Malahu Fort to move ahead with speed and alacrity on the matter. According to Minister Holness, Jamaica must become a republic. He added that whatever obstacles the process might encounter, the government will be in for the long haul and will do whatever it takes. In the meantime, the Prime Minister pointed out that he regularly keeps tabs on the homicide rate, particularly in St. James, and has firmly concluded that the states of public emergency, SOEs, have worked. He said that he does his own research in this area for his own personal interest and has noted that the president of El Salvador gets 10 straight extensions of their state of emergencies, moving their murder rate from as high as 100 per 100,000 to 7 per 100,000. He explained further that as he reflects on Jamaica in El Salvador, 60,000 persons have been arrested and in Jamaica the figures are comparably less. According to the PM, in two weeks, Jamaica has a maximum 30 persons being incarcerated. The Prime Minister said he is not proposing by any stretch of the imagination that the nation should contemplate that course of action. He wishes to point out, however, that as the society moves back and forth with some of these academic arguments, people are losing their lives. The PM said that the more we remain divided on the subject of taking instrumental and decisive action, criminals feel as if they have places where they can hide. Mr. Holness said the gap must be closed. He added that there is still hope for a consensus to allow Jamaica to use the constitutional tools in a judicious way and in a way that respects human rights and preserves liberal democracy. For the news on PBCJ, I am Maya Chung. A U.S. dollar 1.5 million early childhood development center for innovation is slated for construction in St. James East Central this year. This was announced by Tourism Minister and Member of Parliament Edmund Bartlett, who said it is intended to break ground in March and complete the institution's construction in time to be opened for the start of the 2023-2024 to academic year in September. He was speaking during a fundraiser dinner to commemorate the 25th anniversary of the East Central St. James Education Fund at the Half Moon Hotel Conference Centre in Montego Bay on January 14. Prime Minister Andrew Holness and Minister of Education and Youth Favel Williams headed the officials attending. Mr. Bartlett said the Innovation Center is expected to change the concept of early childhood education in Western Jamaica. He said the government feels that something is missing in terms of our own program and we have to start at the right place, so we decided that we must make amends. This, he explained, gave birth to the concept of the Early Childhood Development Center for Innovation, which will cater to 100 children at a time on a revolving basis. He said the institution will be a climate action school, CAS, through the Take Action Global Tag Network and also a designated Ministry of Education and Youth Parent Place. 
He further indicated that the space will define early childhood regionally and internationally with various teacher support and exchange programs, along with parent engagement and training, which will highlight the constituency as the cutting-edge driver of early childhood transformation. The minister said the focus on early childhood comes on the heels of a program that saw more than 10,000 primary, secondary, and tertiary students benefiting from $60 million in scholarships over the years. Against this background, the minister said he was pleased with the positive impact that the scholarship fund has been having on the lives of students. Education Minister Favel Williams, in her remarks, said the Innovation Center is aligned with the transformation of education now taking place in Jamaica. For the news on PBCJ, I am Maya Chung. The government is embarking on a strategy to transform municipal waste management where disposal dumps such as Riverton St. Andrew and Retirement St. James will be permanently closed, so says Prime Minister Andrew Holness. Speaking at an education fundraiser at Half Moon Hotel in Montego Bay, January 14, Mr. Holness said what currently exists as it relates to waste disposal has become untenable and that a permanent solution is needed. He says the society has a different set of values and standards and, of course, a better understanding of health and environment and certainly much higher expectations than, say, 40 to 50 years ago. Maya Chung tells us more. The Prime Minister says his administration also shares those higher standards and expectations and are trying to live up to them. He said he is also cognizant that these problems that were created decades ago cannot be solved with the flip of a switch. The Prime Minister said that when the government took office in 2016, an enterprise team was put together to study the issue of waste management. The Prime Minister said what will be developed is a total waste management system, an integrated system that will see a long-term concession to construct a waste-to-energy plant in Jamaica. The Prime Minister said that through a public and private sector partnership, the government will give the green light for the construction of a sanitary landfill in the center of the island, adding that lands have been identified already and the studies have been done and the intention is to go to market very soon to find a partner who will construct and operate. He pointed out that the government will also give long-term concession for the collection of waste and the building of transfer stations, noting that the cabinet will soon be getting the business case for all these operations. The PM said once the business case is approved, then the RFP process begins. He said that the government has done a sounding already of investors and it has been very successful. This is an area that is maturing and there are many investors who have turnkey operations who want to come and do the entire thing, the Prime Minister said. Mr. Holness further noted that the new initiative will also see the National Solid Waste Management Authority, NSWMA, changing its mode of operation from being a collector of waste and a manager of landfills. He added that the NSWMA will now become the enforcement arm and their operations will change. For the news on PBCJ, I am Maya Chung. Is measles making a comeback? How concerned should we be? What can parents do to protect their children? The Pan American Health Organization's Vismita Gupta Smith speaks with World Health Organization's Dr. Patrick Connor on this issue in this week's Living Healthy Report. Is measles making a comeback? How concerned should we be and what can parents do to protect their children? Hello and welcome to Science in 5. I'm Vismita Gupta-Smith. We are talking to Dr. Patrick O'Connor today. Welcome, Patrick. Let's start with the disease measles. Tell us about it. Is it making a comeback? Thank you, Vismita. Measles is a highly contagious disease caused by the measles virus. It is easily spread through the air by an infected person coughing or sneezing. And symptoms typically include fever and rash. Complications of measles infection are common and can range from mild ones such as diarrhea to extremely serious ones like pneumonia and brain inflammation. Measles is a serious disease. And before the measles vaccine was introduced in the early 1960s and commonly used, 
there are an estimated 2 million deaths attributed to measles every year, and this was mostly in children. Patrick, why are we seeing a resurgence of measles, and how concerned should we be? The interventions that we put in place for the COVID-19 pandemic, such as mask wearing, teleworking, and travel restrictions, also slowed the transmission of other respiratory diseases, including measles. And as those restrictions are being eased, we are seeing an increase in the number of measles cases being reported, particularly in Africa, the Middle East, and Southeast Asia. This is particularly worrisome because there's been an increase in the number of children that have missed their routine measles doses due to disruptions of healthcare services during the COVID-19 pandemic. In 2021, there were an estimated 25 million children that missed their first dose of measles vaccines. In 2019, that was 20 million. And if you remember, we had the largest outbreaks of measles that we've seen in two decades in 2019. In order to prevent a repeat of 2019, we need to make sure that those that have missed their measles vaccine get vaccinated. Patrick, what can parents do to protect their children from measles? The best protection against measles is being vaccinated. The measles vaccine is safe and effective, and since its introduction, billions of doses have been given globally, preventing serious illness and death. Even if you or your child has missed one of the scheduled measles doses, it's not a problem you can get vaccinated right now. It's important to remember that being vaccinated against measles also protects all of your other immunizations. An added benefit of being vaccinated is that you are also protecting your family and members of your community from getting measles. And this is particularly important for those that are too young to get vaccinated or those who are sick or immunocompromised. If you have specific questions or concern about measles or the timing of the measles vaccination, I would suggest that you have a conversation with your trusted health care provider. Thank you, Patrick. That was Science in 5 today. Until next time then, stay safe, stay healthy, and stick with science. Time now for the Business Report with Danita Rodney. Nutsford Express, a leading provider of transportation services in Jamaica, is reporting a 65% increase in revenues for its November 2022 quarter. The company reported a net profit of $59 million from a loss of $820,000 over the same period last year. Nutsford said it has been able to maintain its market share in the face of increased competition due to its efficient operations modern fleet of vehicles, and excellent customer service. Additionally, the company has embraced digital technology to improve the customer experience such as online booking, contactless payment, and real-time tracking of vehicles. Now for your market updates. In foreign exchange trading for Monday, January 16, the US dollar sold for an average of $153.94, the Canadian dollar ended trading at $114.43. The pound sterling traded for $184.75. And the euro sold for $166.40. In GSE trading, the GSE index declined by 3,736 points. The junior market index advanced by 33 points. The combined market index declined by 3,181 points and the All Jamaican Composite Index declined by 4,412 points. Overall market activity resulted from trading in 107 stocks of which 41 advanced, 52 declined and 14 traded firm. Stocks advanced for Access Financial Services Limited. Caribbean Producers Jamaica Limited and Dollar Financial Services Limited. Stocks declined for 13A Student Living Jamaica Limited, AMG Packaging and Paper Company Limited, and Barita Investments Limited. Trading firm were 13A Student Living Jamaica Limited Variable Preference, Blue Power Group Limited, and CAC 2000 9.5% Cumulative Redeemable Preference Shares. The overall volume leaders were Paramount Trade in Jamaica Limited with over 7 million units, Wigton Wind Farm Limited Ordinary Shares, and Carreras Limited with over 1 million units. 
In regional stocks on the Trinidad and Tobago Stock Exchange, Calypso Macro Index Fund was the only active security posting a volume of 100 shares. On the Barbados Stock Exchange, zero securities traded. In regional business, the Eastern Caribbean Central Bank ECCB, is encouraging citizens of the Eastern Caribbean Currency Union to engage in prudent financial planning to help them achieve their financial goals and wellness. In the latest edition of the bank's web show, ECCB Connects, Director of Finance, Chamberlain University at Tellem Global Education, Adele Stowe, shares some steps on how individuals can manage their money to achieve financial goals. And so that may require us to, if we're talking in terms of personal planning, reevaluate whether we need to go have another go at our expense plan and be more strict or reinvest in a specific area. Do you want to reevaluate the goals that you had set for the year? Did, were they a little bit lofty? Do you need to recalibrate your entire plan and then re, you know, go through that five-step loop again? Do you need to look within your business and understand other things that may be going very well um, or evaluate the things that may be going well? And you may have to make tough decisions to forego one thing that would have been a like to have in order to drive an investment in something that's more critical and, and get you closer to your goal. So, and so budgeting post setting the budget um, involves a lot of measuring um, and monitoring and evaluating to ensure that you don't just set the budget and walk away. Flexibility. You, correct. You set the budget, you measure against your what you're actually doing against the activities that you're planning you're seeing you you want to see if they're going to yield the outcomes that you did plan if they're not you probably need to reevaluate how you take actions um, to achieve your budget if there is an emergency or con um, that happens or an unanticipated event that um, derails you from the broader plan, then you need to reevaluate your overall plan or look within your, your um, current pool of resources to find a way to offset that and to keep you on track. ECCB Connects can be viewed on the Central Bank's YouTube page. I'm Andre Huey for SKN Newsline. In international business, China's economic growth in 2022 was one of the worst in nearly half a century as the fourth quarter was hit hard by COVID curbs and a property market slump. Data released from the National Bureau of Statistics on Tuesday showed GDP expanded by 3% last year, badly missing the official target of around 5.5%. The figures highlight how China's economy has been weighed down by stringent COVID curbs and a property market slump. Other indicators such as retail sales and factory output beat expectations for December but were still weak. The data puts pressure on policymakers in Beijing to unveil more stimulus this year. Last month, Beijing abruptly lifted all its strict antivirus measures that had severely restrained economic activity. However, the relaxation has led to a sharp rise in COVID cases that economists say might hamper near-term growth. Also in December, top leaders pledged to focus on stabilising the economy in 2023 and step up policy support to ensure key targets are hit. Economists are optimistic, anticipating China's growth to rebound this year as it reopens to the world. But policymakers still face a host of challenges, including demographic ones. Tuesday's data revealed China's population to have fallen in 2022 for the first time since 1961, a historic turn that is expected to mark the start of a long period of decline in its citizen numbers. Asian shares dropped after the Chinese data, while the yuan skidded to a one-week low. In market data for oil, oil prices rose to their highest in two weeks after China posted weak but expectation beating annual economic growth data and on hopes that a recent shift in its COVID-19 policy will boost fuel demand. Brent crude futures rose $1.14 to $85.60 a barrel and West Texas Intermediate crude was up $0.47 to $80.33. And that was the Business Report on PBCJ. I'm Danita Rodney. 
In regional news, in the Cayman Islands, there is a suspected case of avian flu following the deaths of poultry that have died of respiratory illness. Well, as part of its routine surveillance activities for the possible introduction of avian influenza into the local poultry population, the Department of Agriculture veterinary staff has done preliminary rapid testing of all domestic poultry that have died of possible respiratory illnesses. Following initial and subsequent testing of additional birds in one flock, five possible positive results were detected in Grand Cayman last Monday. Further samples have been collected in accordance with the standard international guidelines for sus suspect cases of avian influenza and have been sent to an international reference laboratory in the United States for testing. Now, the ministry says until results have been, have been received, it remains a suspected case and testing is part of the investigative process. They did note that one of the common ways of introduction of the avian influenza has been shown to be through contact between domestic and infected world or migratory birds. The flock in question was humanely euthanized in the area placed under quarantine restrictions. In Guyana, despite warnings and bad experiences of other countries engaged in loan agreements with the Chinese Exim Bank, President Ifran Ali says he's not worried as China has an integral role to play in Guyana's development. More from Antonio Day. Natural Resources Shadow Minister David Pallison recently questioned the government's reason for taking 172 million U.S. dollars from the China Exim Bank for the new Demerara Harbor Bridge project, where there is in excess of 1 billion U.S. dollars deposited into the Natural Resources Fund. There's no need for us to be borrowing money to finish this project. It's, it is another scam. It is putting us de our debt, our debt. Is, 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 is tremendously high. Pilsen also questioned the credibility of the 260 million US dollars contract awarded to the joint venture of China Railway Corporation. Against the backdrop of warnings and bad experiences of other countries engaged in loan agreements with the Chinese Exim Bank, President Irfan Ali, in a virtual interview with Chinese journalist Wang Guang on the China Global Television Network, CGTN posited that he's not threatened by these warnings, as China has an integral role to play in Ghana's development. Many reporters in Western news media described China's economic activities and economic uh, investment, for example, in uh, Latin America and the Caribbean, your country included, as predatory and neo-colonialism. We see China, Chinese investment and investors and an, as an important an integral part of the development and advancement of our country. President of Dominica Roosevelt Skerritt speaking to the press on Monday says following the shortage of petroleum products in December, it has been rectified. Now, as you recall, Dominica signed on to the Petrocaribbean Agreement very early after its um, establishment by President of Venezuela, of blessed memory, Hugo Chavez. And, uh, and part of this of this um, strategy was for energy security in the region. With Venezuela using its vast resources to help countries like Dominica ensure that we can have uh, continued um, access and of supplies. Uh, when we entered into the agreement, the government took a deliberate decision to only import from Venezuela diesel and liquefied petroleum gas, what we call LPG, and leaving the import of gasoline exclusively uh, to the other existing. In international news, Trade Secretary Alfred Pascal met with senior executives of companies with business interests in the Philippines, pitching the country to potential investors who are looking to establish or expand operations. The Department of Trade and Industry on Tuesday said a series of bilateral meetings with senior company executives were held on January 16, the first day of the annual 53rd World Economic Forum in Switzerland. The Department of Trade and Industry is a prime mover of consumer welfare. It is committed to protecting the rights and interests of consumers. It is also committed to developing policies and programs aimed at sustaining the growth and development of the Philippine economy. The BBC is reporting that joint drills by Russia and Belarus, which will last for two weeks, have begun. Concerns are growing that Moscow is pressuring Minsk to join the war in Ukraine. The Belarusian Defense Ministry has insisted the drills will be defensive in nature. But there are fears in Ukraine that they are in preparation for a new ground offensive. 
Yeah, well, they, they often frame these joint military drills as defensive in response to aggression from Ukraine, in their words. But we have to remind ourselves that it is Ukraine that is continuing to come under Russia's invasion. And Belarus, uh, its territory as well as airspace, has been used as a loading platform by Russian troops. Now, it is starting to feel a little bit 2022, this time last year, when many will remember the, the, the Kremlin was gathering troops on the border. There was a growing geopolitical crisis and many wondered whether Vladimir Putin would actually do the unthinkable and launch a full-scale invasion. Joint exercises were announced in Belarus and that brought Kyiv uh, under direct threat. And we all know what happened after that. So it will be causing a lot of worry. Uh, but also uh, the fear is, is that uh, Vladimir Putin of Russia is trying to pull or pressure Alexander Lukashenko of Belarus into his war effort by deploying uh, Belarusian troops. Now, it's hard to visualise that at the moment. Alexander Lukashenko is seen as Europe's last dictator. He's been in power for a very long time. He survived a popular uprising in 2020, not least in part to his alliance with Vladimir Putin. It is a country reliant on Russia in terms of energy. So that is a concern. But the reason why it's hard to visualise is because back in February the 24th, 2022, the day of the full-scale invasion, Russia deployed its most elite units, its best trained soldiers on the attack in the capital. That attack failed and Russia was defeated and forced to focus its efforts on the east. So it's hard to see that happening again. But of course, it's a concern for Ukraine because that Ukraine at the moment is concentrating its efforts in the east where there is the most intense fighting. In sports, Andy Murray won an epic five-set battle with number 13 Mattia Berrettini on Tuesday in the opening round of the 2023 Australian Open. The three-time Grand Slam winner had to save match point in the final set and rallied in the deciding tiebreak to win in the Rod Lava Arena. After years of battling devastating injuries had left his tennis career in jeopardy, Murray struggled to hold back his emotions in the immediate aftermath as his achievement dawned on him. The epic four-hour and 49-minute long victory was Moy's first win over a top 20 opponent at a Grand Slam since 2017. Got him. Dan Murray. Gee, I have, I, I just Murray have a mental block with this, with this play on a hard court. That's, I thought it was poorly executed, and it's dangerous. There's still speed in the Murray legs. That's just too deep. And he gets to the top, that ball almost at the top of the bounce. It was that easy for him. Bad choice from Berrettini, or certainly... So important to consolidate the break. Berrettini, not one of the best out there on tour in terms of getting the re-break after dropping serve. And he's in Murray. his stat in that department. Murray lands the opening three games perfectly. And here the conditions are thick. Um, I'm sure you would have talked about it with the, being the roof closed, so it's not lively as it would have been with the roof open. And Berrettini, you saw there looking at his racket. I think he's going to go down pitch in his racket tension. And that's the news on PBCJ. I'm Simone Absalom Gale. You can follow us on our social media platforms at PBC Jamaica. Thank you so much for watching.